اوكي فاطمه جو اهيد اوكي السلام عليكم ايفريون توداي ام جوينج تو بريزنت اباشي كافكا فريم ورك اي ويل ستارت فيرست وذ ان اوفر فيو وير اي ويل كفر اور انسر فور كويشنز Uh, which are what is Apache Kafka, how does it work, and where, where does it come from, and how does it fit in the big data ecosystem. So what is Apache Kafka? It's a distributed streaming platform that does two things. The first one is creating real-time data streams, and the second one is processing this real-time data streams. So assume that you have an um, electricity meter in your house, which is generating lots of data. Um, and this data is going somehow to, to a Kafka server. Uh, similarly, um, there are many, this Kafka server is receiving data from many electricity meter, meters in all the houses in your city. So uh, generating this data and sending it to the Kafka server is what we call here uh, creating real uh, time data streams. Then imagine or assume that you have now an application that um, reads the data from the Kafka server and uh, process it, for example, here to, uh, to, to monitor uh, the charge uh, um, of the electricity in every house. And when the charge exceeds a threshold, a threshold, it will send a, a message to an SMS message to the house uh, owner to alert him about this. So this is what we call here processing real-time data stream. So Apache Kafka is a highly scalable and distributed platform for creating and processing uh, data streams in real time. Uh, how does it work? It, it adopts uh, the publish subscribe uh, messaging system. Um, any publish subscribe messaging system typically has three components, which are uh, the message producer, broker, and consumer. Uh, the producer is responsible for sending messages to the broker uh, or publishing uh, messages, and the broker just uh, saved this data in a local storage and is the one responsible for uh, co uh, the communication between the consumer and the producer, uh, such that uh, the producer and the consumer are completely decoupled. So the consumer will read the messages or request messages from the broker. So if you recall the example of uh, the electricity meters, the left side here is the message producers here uh, all the electricity meters are message producers and the message pro broker is the kafka server and the application uh, that monitors and processes the data is the message consumer um, so it is a publish subscribe works as a publish subscribe messaging system where we have a, pro a producer application to publish data as messages uh, a Kafka server configured to act as a broker and stores the data in a local storage and a consumer application that subscribes to read and process a stream. So where does it come from? Uh, it, it was initially developed at LinkedIn to solve the data integration problem with the objective of uh, providing a high performance message messaging system that can handle user activity and system metrics in real time. And then it was released as uh, an open source project on GitHub in late 2010. Then uh, in 2012, it became part of uh, the Apache Foundation. Um, the scalability of Kafka has helped LinkedIn users grow uh, as per the statistics or in February 2020 to uh, produce 7 trillion messages and consume uh, 5 petabytes of data daily. Uh, so how does it fit in the big data ecosystem? We can uh, say that uh, Apache Kafka provides the circulatory system of the data ecosystem uh, as it can act as um, a middle layer to decouple your real-time data pipelines and it can be used to feed real-time and operational data systems like Storm, Flink and Spark streaming and also it can stream data to uh, databases like RDBMS, Cassandra or even Amazon S3 uh, for, for some future data analysis. Uh, it supports the integration with many uh, stream processing frameworks like Spark, Storm, Flink, uh, and IBM Streams, just to name a few. And also it supports uh, the integration with Elasticsearch, Press to Hive, with logging tools, and also the integration with Hadoop uh, using many platforms. Um, now Kafka uh, is used by many um, 
companies uh, like uh, Netflix, LinkedIn, uh, Firefox, Uber, and Twitter, and many others. Um, and that's it for with the overview. I will move now to the architecture, and I will explain the core concepts of the Kafka Apache Kafka. I will cover uh, this uh, terminology or con concepts uh, in in this uh, part. So let's start. Uh, Fatma, Fatma, I have just a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, so it is not just uh, a queuing system. It's or, uh, or a system that creates the data streams. It also processes. Yeah, it is. It's even there is a library now. I will explain it. Uh, a Kafka stream uh, library that processes the stream itself. Similarly, so I, as so I can use Kafka to process my stream. I don't need something like uh, Spark streaming or Storm or Link or anything. Uh, depends on the application. If it's must, uh, it doesn't handle. I think huge uh, for processing specifically. Um, it depends on the application. I will uh, compare later the Kafka stream with Spark stream. But okay. uh, uh, the main the main uses for it is not, I think, to process the stream. Uh, or it depends on the application. I will uh, come to this point later. Um, okay. So um, okay, let me go to the through the architecture now. Uh, for the producer, as I said, um, is the one responsible for publishing or sending messages to the Kafka server. Um, the message, uh, the message records can be can have dif different schemas and different structures. But to Kafka, it should be received as an array. Uh, it will be just received as an array of bytes because the producer should serialize uh, serialize these messages uh, before sending it to the server. Um, let's assume here we have. We want our application uh, or producer application to send text files to, to Kafka server. So our stream would be uh, uh, text files. So the, we will we need to implement here uh, the producer uh, producer that process this text file, split it into lines, and send each line as uh, a message record. But before that, we should serialize it to uh, uh, using string serializer. Um, the same way, if we have, for example, a database table, we need to send each row as um, a message uh, record. So, uh, as I said, it it should for Kafka, it will be, be just received and as a, an array of bytes. Any message would be received as an array of bytes. Um, the consumer is the one who will uh, consume these messages from uh, the Kafka server. But it should request for messages. So basically, the consumer will will have an infinite loop that will keep requesting uh, messages from uh, Kafka server, um, and the Kafka server will keep sending messages to consumer as long as it is receiving uh, from the producer. Um, the Kafka server is called the broker in uh, Apache uh, framework, in Apache Kafka framework. Uh, and uh, it is responsible for the communication between consumer and producer and to make it uh, uh, decoupled. Um, and also, it is uh, the one responsible for storing uh, the messages uh, uh, based on some retention uh, configuration or retention rules uh, that should be configured uh, during the design time. But my, I have a quick question again. Um, yeah. Did I understand correctly that uh, for every message that the consumer needs to get, it has to send a request? And every for every data for every data item, I have to send a request first to get it. Actually, when implementing this, it's a loop. It's a while loop that keeps sending, uh, keep pulling uh, data from the broker. So the consumer has to pull the data always from the broker. The broker doesn't send automatically what it receives. It should pull the it should pull the Kafka broker, but the consumer, as we see later, uh, should be specific, should be uh, subscribed to some specific uh, data, specific topics. Uh, yeah, yeah. Topics. So it will subscribe, but but uh, for every data item, I have to send a request so that I can get one. Actually, it's um, in the loop. It's 
it will pull Kafka, it can receive a group of records at the same time, but when it processes it, it will process each one individually. It can receive a bunch uh -huh. of, or batch of- So whatever uh, whatever is there for, for that consumer will be, uh, will be sent. Yeah, it will, uh, it can receive a group of messages and, but when processing, it will process them individually. And, but, but the consumer is not part of Kafka uh, system, right? It is. It is. There it is, is a producer IP. Both, uh, the, these three components are uh, part of the Apache Kafka. Yeah, yeah but producer I will, IPI, I, consumer IPI, I, and. Oh, uh, consumer IPI. Okay. 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 Yeah, you have. You should configure all. Mm. Okay. The, the, the produ uh, uh, it, it depends on the application, right? I can only configure the consumer, right? I can subscribe as a consumer only, or I can subs subscribe as a producer, right? I don't have to be both. Uh, because the sure. source, the source of the data can be completely different than my application, right? And another source, uh, no, like Twitter, but... Twitter, for example, can be a source, yeah. right? Can be a producer of of uh, of tweets, uh... and then I will subscribe to a specific maybe stream. As okay. an application. Uh, here, um, the producer application can listen to Twitter stream and produce this, uh, what it's uh, receiving from Twitter as messages. So uh, even if you are listening okay. to Twitter, you need to, you need to configure the producer anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that uh, I can deal with the broker. Yeah, you have to. Okay. And uh, okay. for the consumer, for a question for the consumer, um, um, I don't think. Fatma, uh, are they reader and writer, but in a different names? It's like that, I think. Yeah, Fatma. I don't think so. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, so um, we have the cluster. Uh, we can have, of course, multiple brokers, not only one, to handle the huge amount of the, of the big data. Uh, so we can set many uh, brokers in our clusters. Uh, the, okay, we, now we come to a, an important uh, terminology, which is important to, ca to Apache Kafka here. Uh, Fatma, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, can you go back to the previous slide when you have multiple brokers? These are uh, independent brokers or these are in, in a cluster of uh, for Kafka? I mean, it's a Kafka cluster. No, it's just so a Kafka is... cluster. It is a I will explain. Okay. I will explain later. I am just giving a quick overview, but I then I will go in details. Okay, um, sure. Now uh, they communicate it, it, with each other, of course. Um, so uh, topics. Um, okay, for topics is it's um, a logical name that's given to a, a group of messages. Uh, you can think of it as a database table, where you specify, for example, uh, uh, you specify that a specific producer should uh, sh is, uh, coming from uh, or listening to a specific stream to to be uh, to send message to this specific topic, uh, and also you you should you can uh, configure the consumer to be subscribed to a specific topic to one or more topics. So, for example, let's say I have uh, three producers. Um, each producer is listening to a Twitter stream, but I want this producer to only listen to tweets in Arab, uh, Arabic tweets about COVID. Uh, so I specify that the producer will uh, send this uh, kind of tweets to a topic called COVID Arabic. And similarly, I have another topic which is called COVID English, which has only tweets uh, in English. And I will implement a consumer application. Let's say I want uh, to do sentiment analysis uh, for Arabic, for COVID Arabic tweets. So I will configure my consumer to be subscribed to only COVID Arabic tweets, and it will receive only these tweets and uh, do some analysis somehow. Um, so, uh, at the same time, we can have another consumer, for example, that listen to Arabic and English COVID and do some another, another uh, process another for another task so each consumer can be subscribed to one or more topics and each producer can um, can uh, have uh, its specific topic uh, uh, 
Of course, uh, because we are dealing here with big data, uh, one uh, broker, one uh, machine cannot handle uh, maybe uh, all the messages coming to a single topic. So in that case, we can partition each topic uh, and distribute this, uh, this partition across brokers. So for each topic, we, can diff we have different partitions or a, a, set, a number of partitions that we specify. And um, each partition could be in different uh, broker. So uh, I will explain later how consumers uh, will deal with that and how uh, they will receive uh, data from which part partition. Um, so also there is a terminology called offset, which is um, uh, IDs given to messages. Uh, to each message uh, that arrives to each partition. So, uh, these offset IDs are given uh, automatically by each broker. So whenever a broker receives uh, a part, receive a message to a specific partition, it will give them IDs based on their arrival, based on the order of their arrival. But these IDs are local uh, to the partition itself, and they are not global across the topic. Like here, for example, we have um, we have uh, one topic here. This is one topic. Assume this is one topic, and we have three partitions. So each message will have an offset ID starting from zero, but it will also start from zero for, for the second partition. So the, that's why I said the, the numbering is local to uh, to each partition, not to the topic itself. Um, we can also have a consumer group. Uh, but where... no, sorry, I have, I have another question. Uh, so what is the point of these numbers if they are not global? Any, uh, the consumer will subscribe to a specific partition or to the entire uh, topic? It will be uh, subscribed to a topic, but uh, each consumer will listen later to, uh, will explain later partition. Um, uh, each consumer will be uh, listened to a partition, not a topic later. Ah, this, so one this partition handled, only. Uh, there is a pa partition. Uh, yeah, Silver. Assignment. There is an assignment strategy that 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 the framework will handle. Uh, there is different strategies to uh, to handle this. I will explain them later. But each okay. consumer. Uh, within a group of consumer, also I will come to the consumer group. Each consumer will uh, will listen uh, or will receive messages from single partition. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we have also consumer group uh, where we can have multiple consumers that belong to one group. Uh, why why we need this? Because sometimes we have a mass when we have massive tasks. And we can distribute this the load of this task among many consumers, where all of them uh, work to achieve that task. But in that case, for example, let's assume. Um, okay, let's assume this consumer group is is listening to uh, one topic here, uh, COVID English topic that has three partitions. Each consumer can consume messages from only one partition if it's from the same group, it cannot uh, read uh, messages. Uh, okay, in other, in other words, uh, two co if the same consumers uh, from the same group cannot listen to the same partition, okay? Uh, but if they are from another uh, group, they can share the same partition, okay? Because um, this- I'm Sorry, uh, what, is, what is a consumer group, sorry? A consumer group is, a, uh, uh, many consumer uh, yani sub applications that can um, okay you can think of it as uh, if you have a big task that should be done that you need to do it quickly and you you divide it among uh, many multiple consumers uh, to achieve uh, at the end one task they share the, the, this task and like help each other to achieve it at the end so they work in parallel yeah, that's why they cannot listen to the same partition at the same time because okay. they uh, they they may read the same because they are doing the same task. So why they may read uh, the same message twice? But if we have another consumer group doing another task, they can share the same partition. This is the what I understood. Um, 
Okay. So uh, here we have a Kafka cluster. Um, one uh, one broker in the cluster, uh, in every cluster, we we have we should have or there will be uh, one broker that acts as a controller. Uh, will be con uh, called a controller, and this controller will be elected automatically by other brokers. Why uh, we need this uh, controller is is the one responsible for at assigning partitions, topic partitions to other to uh, among uh, brokers. So. Uh, a partition, a single partition, will be owned by a single broker uh, who will be called a leader in this case. And all, uh, but it can replicate it in other brokers and will be, they will be called followers. For example, let's say here uh, topic A, uh, partition zero, the, the leader of this partition is broker one, but it is uh, replicated here in broker two. Here, broker two is a, a follower for topic A, partition zero. In this case, uh, producers and consumers will send messages to the leader uh, and consume mes the message from the leader. Uh, and then the leader will be responsible to replicate, uh, for example, here, if producers send a mes producer send message to topic A, partition zero, then uh, it will be sent to the leader only and he, uh, he will be responsible for replicating this message to, the, to this uh, partition. Um, also, uh, producers, uh, as I said, they will send consume messages from the leader uh, of the partition. And in case of failure of one broker, uh, the, the other broker will take leadership. In case of failure, for example, of broker one here, uh, topic A partition zero will be led by broker two. Um, just cover the core concepts. Now I just want to give an overview of about how these components uh, relate to each other. Um, here we said the producer uh, will send a message to one topic at a time. Uh, and a topic can have zero or more producer producers. Why is that? Because uh, when we create topics, this happens at, um, at the design time. Uh, so we may we may create topics. This is these are only logical names. So we may create topics and we implement producers, uh, for example, for some of them, but we still didn't implement producer for the, the remaining topics. Um, a consumer can uh, subscribe to one or more topics, and also a topic can have zero or more consumers. Uh, each consumer can be a member of one consumer group and a partition. Uh, can has one uh, consumer per group. Um, here, um, a cluster can have one or more brokers, and a bro broker can be part of one cluster. Uh, also, uh, as I said, uh, every replica will have one leader only, and it will it can have zero or uh, 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 zero or follower uh, replica. Um, yeah, uh, consumer pulls messages from zero or more partitions per topic. Um, I think that's it here. Do you have any questions about this? Uh, Fatma, I have a question. The consumer has to know the topic uh, that it it uh, it wants to listen to, right? Yeah. Yeah, when how, you how, uh, the topic is just an ID or what? Um, it's a name. Name it's and the name, name. the name has to be, the name has to be unique. It should be unique. Yes, this uh, okay. should be configured by the admin uh, before any yeah, when the, uh, at the design time you should first create topic then you can. By by the admin or by the producer. No, 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 not the producer. I will, so I will explain now the API. But okay. uh, no, it's not uh, the producer. Only also uh, will specify which uh, topic will send to. It's not ah, the one who. Okay. Will I thought I thought that the producer is the one who defines the topic. No, 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 no. This is the admin client API. I, I will explain it now. Um, okay. The admin okay. of the of Kafka cluster or admin of what? Uh, I'm not sure if we can call it 
admin of class correct letter. Uh, I'm not sure. But it is the admin client API or manages this. I know. Uh, I'm not sure. I can't answer this question. Okay. Um, okay. So um, there is um, uh, also, um, in addition to the consumer and uh, producer API, we have Kafka Streams library, which is uh, built on, uh, on top of the consumer producer API, which I will explain now its architecture before going to the programming interface. So um, it is a Java Scala library built on top of the producer consumer API, and it can be deployed anywhere. No cluster is needed for this. Um, it can provide out of the box parallel processing, scalability, and fault tolerance. And what uh, you can think of this Kafka Stream library as replacing the consumer client. It will be an application that consume or uh, subscribe to Kafka topics. So what uh, what this uh, Kafka Streams library offers, uh, and it's not supported by the consumer client, is exactly once processing semantics, which is by default by in this library, and also fault tolerance, stateful uh, processing, including uh, streaming, joins, aggregation, and windowing, uh, the same as uh, uh, we saw in, in Spark streaming. And also it supports interactive queries, um, to expose the latest processing results to other applications and services via request response API. And it is more expressive because it ships with the functional programming style uh, with operations such as map, reduce, and filter similarly as uh, similar as uh, Spark streaming and other uh, uh, frameworks. So um, let's look at architecture. Okay, uh, let's assume now you have a Kafka stream, uh, Streams application, which is running outside the Kafka cluster, but it is uh, listening or uh, subscribed to uh, consuming data from two topics, from two Kafka topics, and each topic will have uh, is having three partitions in this case. So what will happen when you run uh, your Kafka Stream application? Um, the Kafka Streams will, will create uh, three logical uh, tasks. Uh, why three here? Because the maximum number of partitions we have in the two topics it's listening to is uh, three. So you can you can think of it as creating three consumers uh, uh, in this case. So uh, we will have two, three tasks that will consume the data uh, from this partition. And um, uh, assigning uh, the, the partition to these tasks will be uh, done automatically by the, this library. And then you can also um, uh, create or configure uh, the threads or your application to be multi-threaded. For example, let's say you have one single machine and you specify that you want two threads. Uh, Kafka Streams library will, take, will handle this uh, assignment of tasks among these threads. Uh, here it will assign one task for each trade and the remaining will go to any one of them. Uh, and if you want to scale out your application, let's say you have another machine and create, for example, another thread, it will automatically also assign that task, the ta third task in to the other uh, machine. In case of failure of one of the machine, also it will handle this and uh, assign the task of the um, the machine that has an issue uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the working uh, machine. Um, any question here? But now, uh, regarding the partitions on, on the ca uh, Kafka cluster, there is assumption here that these partitions are independent from each other, right? So they will be processed with different tasks later. Uh, um, okay, let me think about your question. Okay, these partitions are of the same topic, but but having uh, um, a group of messages, uh, just a subset of each uh, messages, right? Then mm -hmm. um, uh, here, having uh, this task just to parallelize the work, so each task will, uh, will listen to one partition just to ensure that 
uh, we don't have two tasks reading from this uh, reading the same pass uh, messages and reading uh, process them process them twice or many times we will so, see uh, example right uh, for yeah. uh, one task okay yeah, we, okay yeah. okay so um uh, I will go now uh, through the programming interface where I will, I will explain how we can create a Kafka producer and write messages to Kafka, how we can create consumer uh, and read data from Kafka, and how ma we, ma we can manage Apache Kafka programmatically, and also an example about using Kafka Streams library. So we start sending messages to Kafka by creating a producer record object which have uh, which should have a topic and value which are mandatory but we can set the key and partition but they are um, optional um, the producer will serialize the key and value to byte arrays and then uh, the record will be added to the corresponding partition and topic um, there is a partitioner uh, by default uh, there is a partitioning strategy uh, using hash, hash uh, function, but we can implement our, um, as I, I will present in the, in the next slide, we can implement our custom partitioner. Um, so the record will, be, will go to the corresponding partition and topic. And then uh, if the broker, if the Kafka broker managed to, to save uh, and write uh, the, this message uh, on the cluster, it will send a message with the record metadata uh, including the topic, partition, and offset. It will send that message to the producer. And in case of failure uh, to write the messages, it will return an error to the producer, which may retry resending uh, the message again. Um, so to construct our Kafka producer, uh, we need three mandatory properties which are uh, specifying the bootstrap servers. Um, we need to specify at least two, uh, two brokers uh, to establish a connection to, to the Kafka cluster. Uh, why two? Because uh, in case of failure of one, we will have a, a backup. Uh, we need to specify a key serializer, which is the name of the class that will be used to serialize keys. And this needs to be specified even if only values are sent. As I said, key is optional, but still, even if we don't, have keys, we need to specify this uh, serializer. Um, we need also to specify the value serializer, which is the name of the class that will be used uh, to serialize values. If we can look at the example here, where they are creating here a properties instance, and then they are um, setting this three mandatory properties that I mentioned, which are the bootstrap server, two brokers here, and then uh, they are specifying the key and value serializer. They are using string serializer in this case, but there are there is there are different serializers like integer serializer, for example, and then create a Kafka producer uh, by specifying the key and value um, types and passing the Kafka properties that we just configured here. Uh, so how we use this Kafka producer to send messages? We need to create uh, an, uh, a producer uh, record. Um, here, uh, they are using a constructor that have, um, let me show you here. They are using a constructor that has topic, key, and value. But there are diff five different constructors that we can use to create a producer record based on our application. Uh, as I said, because the key and partition are optional, here, uh, we have a constructor that has only topic of value if we need this. And then we will use the producer that we created in the pre previous slide to send this record. Here we have three primary methods for sending messages. The first one is fire and forget. So we don't really care if it arrives successfully or not. Uh, the second one is synchronous send, returns a future object and we use get to wait on the future. And the third one is a synchronous send we call send with a callback function, which gets triggered when it, received, uh, it receives a response. So here they are using um, fire and forget, but still they are catching exception here because we can have different exception like uh, serialization exception when it fails to serialize a message, buffer exhausted exception when buffer is full, and interrupt exception if 
sending is uninterrupted for any reason. Um, as I said, we can implement our custom partitioning strategy using uh, the, this is for the producer partitioning uh, strategy for the producer. Uh, so to which uh, mess which messages will go to which partition. So we can use here, uh, for example, in this example, they are saying if the key equal to banana, they will send this uh, messages to, to the last partition. All messages that has banana as a key will go to the last partition. And any other messages will go to any partition. So by default, it will go to any partition using hashing function, but uh, you can specify your uh, custom partitioning strategy. We come now to how to construct a Kafka, a Kafka consumer. The same way, we need to create a properties instance, specify the bootstrap servers, and uh, the key deserializer and uh, value deserializer. And there is another, uh, uh, property which is group ID, which is not mandatory because it specifies the consumer group. So if the consumer is part of group, it will, you should specify this. If not, you will just keep, you will not, uh, you don't have to specify it. Um, another thing is that we have to subscribe. The consumer should subscribe uh, to a topic. Uh, you can subscribe to a single or multiple topics. Here uh, we are subscribing to a customer country's topic. And you can subscribe to multiple topics using also regular expression. For example, if you want the consumer to, to be subscribed to all topics that has tests and its name, then you, you can use regular expression. Um, reading data from Kafka. OK. We said that consumer uh, will read uh, data uh, in a loop and will and it's an infinite loop where uh, the consumer continuously pull uh, Kafka for more data. And the consumer must keep pulling Kafka. And if they don't, if uh, for any reason they stop pulling data, uh, they will be considered dead. And the partitions that are, they are consuming uh, from will be handed to another consumer in the group automatically. So here, um, the poll here, if we can see, the poll return records, a list of records, and then uh, the consumer will, uh, for each year, for loop, for each record, it will process, uh, do some processing here, just printing uh, the topic, partition, offset, uh, the key and the value. Um, so it will receive a set of records, but it will process them one by one. Um, OK, so as I mentioned um, previously, uh, consumers will, will be uh, subscribed to, to a topic, but this topic may be partitioned or will be partitioned. So consumers may consume from specific partition. So how, um, how uh, this uh, assignment will be decided? We have a partition, and as, uh, partition, uh, partition assigner class. Uh, that given consumers and topics that are they subscribed to, it will decide which partition, uh, partitions will be assigned to which consumer. So Kafka has the following assignment strategies, which is uh, the first one is range. This is the default one. This one will assign uh, each consumer a consecutive a subset of partitions from each topic it subscribes to. So um, it will, for example, let's say this consumer will have um, from zero to three, uh, partitions from zero to three will be assigned to this uh, consumer. And uh, from four to, to five will be assigned to another consumer and that's, uh, et cetera. Um, there is the round robin one, which takes all partitions from all subscribed topic and assign them to consumers sequentially one by one. And there are two uh, other two, uh, um, assignment strategies, which are sticky and cooperative sticky. Uh, to be honest, I am not 100% sure I understand them uh, perfectly, but um, it is um, what, what I understood is that um, 
it, it, can, it can balance the assignment as much as possible. And in case of balance, for example, for this ticket, in case of rebalance, a rebalance, it will leave as many assignments as possible in place. And it will try to minimize the off overhead associated with, with moving partition assignments from one broker to another. Um, also for the cooperative sticky, it's the same as the uh, sticky, but uh, consumers can continue consuming from, parti for, from the partitions that are not uh, assigned. Um, okay, now we come to managing Apache Kafka programmatically. What do we mean by that? Uh, in the first versions of the Kafka, the Apache Kafka, um, managing uh, the framework is, was done with the command lines, but, but then they, they provided an admin client API, which make it easier, much easier for, uh, for this management. What, what can we do? What, uh, what do we mean by management? Uh, what this admin client API offers is, uh, the first thing is topic management. Using this admin client API, we can create and delete topics, and we can list all the topics that are available in the cluster and uh, see the, 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 their descriptions. We can also um, manage the consumer uh, group we, uh, by exploring and modifying uh, them. Also, we can check the cluster metadata, check the, the brokers, and also we can perform advanced admin operations like adding partitions to a topic, deleting records from topic, and leader uh, ele election. This is just to name a few. Um, let me show you here how can we, um, uh, how we can create an admin client object and just one example, what can we do with it? Uh, here also we create a properties object and we, uh, we configure the bootstrap server and uh, we create an admin client object here and we do some, any operations we need, any management we need and then we, we should close it uh, given a timeout uh, as a parameter. Okay, what can we do? Like, uh, just an example is topic management. Uh, if we want to list the topic uh, and to know what are the topics that are created in our cluster, we can use this uh, admin uh, client object just to, by saying list topics and uh, get the, na the names here in the loop. We can also uh, delete topics. We can delete, uh, say, uh, ask the admin to delete uh, some topic, a list of topics, but we need to, uh, to check if they really, uh, really deleted because of this asynchronous nature of this delete. Um, now, uh, here is an example of using the Kafka Streams library, uh, uh, the word count example. Uh, okay, so as I said, the Kafka Streams library, we can replace the consumer uh, or it's an application that reads uh, from the Kafka server uh, and it should read from topic. So Kafka Stream library, it's tightly coupled with, Ka with Kafka. It, it only works with Kafka uh, topics. The input should be a Kafka topic. So uh, here, uh, if we, we are importing here the Kafka Streams library and we are configuring, we are doing the configuration, just um, giving a name to the application, uh, bootstrap server, uh, and uh, we are setting the key and value serialization and the serialization, uh, serialization uh, classes. And then we are creating a stream builder. This stream builder will, will um, consume data from streams, plain text input. So this is the name of the topic that we want our uh, application to uh, consume data from. So we read from plain text input, and then we can perform the operations that we did in any uh, platform like, uh, like Spark Streaming, using flat map, uh, values, group by, and count. And then when we get the frequency of each word, we can convert it to a stream, and we can write it again to another topic. Here they are writing to a streams, word count, output topic. So now, just think of it that we are here writing to a topic, so another application can, any another consumer or another Kafka Streams application can read or consume from this topic and do, and do further uh, processing using uh, uh, the data available here. So now we are done with the programming interface. Um, um, so why Kafka? Uh, why, uh, what makes Apache Kafka a good choice compared to other, to other published subscribe systems? 
such as the traditional uh, rabbit and pew, for example. Um, the most important thing is having uh, or supporting multiple producers. So we can have, whether this producer are producing uh, to a single topic or to multiple topics, it is ideal for aggregating data from many front end systems. And also it supports multiple consumers. So we can read uh, any single stream of messages without interfering uh, with each other. Um, also, um, uh, compared here, uh, just to mention one point about multiple consumers, compared to other uh, publish, subscribe, uh, or queuing uh, systems, they, if a client reads a message, uh, it will not be available to another client. Here it's different. Here if a consumer is, uh, given that it is from another consumer group, a message can be read, uh, can be uh, processed by different consumers. Single message can be processed by different consumers to, to perform different tasks. Uh, the other, the another point, the important point is the message or disk-based retention, where the messages are committed to disk and will be stored with configur configurable retention rules. Uh, the configuration here uh, will be per topic, so every topic should ha can have different retention rules. And in this case, consumer don't always need to work on real time and even if consumers, uh, for any reason, are uh, due to traffic, for example, are slow, uh, the data will still be available on the, the cluster. It will, we will not lose uh, data in this case. Um, the, another, uh, the, the fourth point is scalability. We can expand the cluster online when the system is online without affecting the availability of the system. Also, uh, given all the features that I mentioned, it provides uh, high performance where producers, consumers, and brokers can all be scaled out to handle very large message streams uh, very easily. Um, now, uh, I compare, I just present here a comparison between Kafka Streams Library versus Spark Streaming. Uh, Spark Streaming is a standalone framework where Kafka Stream is just a part of, uh, it's just a library that can be used as part of a microserver service. Um, uh, for Spark Streaming, data received uh, from, from live streams is divided into micro batches for processing, where for Kafka Stream, it is real, real time, um, uh, so it processes per data stream. Uh, for Kafka Stream, we don't need any separated processing cluster, which it can be deployed on any machine, but for Spark streaming, we need a separated cluster for processing. And it needs, Spark streaming needs to be reconfigured for scaling where Kafka streams can be scaled easily by just adding Java processes, no reconfiguration is required. And they both provide exactly one semantics. Um, here, um, comparison with other streaming platforms, frameworks. Um, it's not a, comp it's uh, listing actually uh, the advantages of each one uh, and the advantages of each of the, of each framework. So the, the main thing here uh, that's, uh, that's for, to, to mention here, uh, so I mentioned it previously slide, but I want to say it again. It's that Kafka streams, it's, not a framework as Spark Streaming, Storm, Flink, Flink. Here it is just a library that process uh, the stream. Um, and, but it is uh, the disadvantage also that it is tightly coupled with Kafka, I cannot use without Kafka in picture because it should consume data from Kafka topics. And also it's not for heavy lifting work like, uh, like Spark Streaming or Flink. Um, so that's it, I think, for the presentation. Uh, I, here I present uh, the references I used in my presentation. Uh, I mainly relied uh, on this book, uh, where I provide here the download link for it. Um, uh, the, the book is have all these code snippets that I showed you. Um, also, I am providing all the references that I used, whether they are from blogs or uh, um, from uh, the, the Kafka documentation itself. 
uh, that you can uh, have further information about the Apache Cup. Thank you. Thanks, Fatma. Any uh, thanks for the for the nice presentation, really. Uh, any um, questions? I haven't heard from Anila or Aman at all. Any questions, Anila or Aman, or anybody else? Uh, no questions, Doctor. Okay. Aman, are you with us today? Yes, Doctor. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, no. It's, it was clear. Okay. Any any uh, questions from any other? Okay. Thanks, Fatma. Uh, I think Karan is next. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Fatma, can you stop sharing, please? All right. Can you see my screen? Yes. Now, there is some noise. I don't know. Uh, is it from my side or not? If you there want is a no more... There is a noise. Hello. Yeah, I don't know if others actually uh, hear that or not. Yes. yes. Yes or no? Yes, yes, yes. What kind of noise? I'm using microphone, maybe that's because of the. I'm not hearing it. What? Can you can you mute your mic? Still, maybe maybe your mic can I? Um, just a second. I'm trying to reduce the input volume bits on, on the minimum. I don't know, it's just a, a periodic noise. Um, not sure if, if the reason is the mic. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm alone in the room, so there is That's, nobody here. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, okay, then, then let's go ahead and let's try to live with it. All right. All right, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, I'll be talking about Apache Solar, which is enterprise search framework. Uh, I built this uh, application trying to stick to the uh, instructions that we were given and in the end to be easy to, 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 to go back and check on the, on the basic information about the Apache Solar. So, um, We'll be talking about what is Apache Solar, uh, objective history of, of this search framework, um, about the Apache Solar data model, which is kind of building blocks for the for the for the framework. Um, of course, client API, which is programming interface and its users, and uh, how Apache Spark, uh, sorry, how Apache Solar. This is a typo fits with the with the with the compare to, to the other frameworks so in the words of uh, legendary internet entrepreneur mark ostrovsky um, relevance is search engines holy grail 
people want results that are closely connected to their queries. So this was driving force be, be, behind the, the, the building of the, the, the internet and uh, solar uh, is no difference. So what is, what is, what is Apache Solar? Uh, Apache Solar is a open source enterprise search platform, which is built around Apache Lucene, um, again, open source information retrieval library. Uh, its major features include full, full text search, um, hit highlighting, faceted search, real time indexing, dynamic clustering, um, etc., including NoSQL. Uh, important thing is that it has great uh, um, capabilities when it comes to handling of the formats. So it, it can handle various documents, whether they are Word, PDF, or some other, other format. It provides distributed search and index replication. And it is, of course, as a big data framework designed for scalability and fault tolerance. So when it comes to the history of uh, Apache Solar, Solar was created as an in-house project by Yonix Sealy at CNET back in 2004. Um, Two years later, Cine donated this uh, project to the Apache Software Foundation, and uh, uh, it was uh, Apache Software Foundation released the enterprise-ready version for, of the product in 2007. It was Solar 1.3. In March of 2011, development of Solar and, and Lucene projects were merged. Um, the next release of the Solar was uh, directly labeled 3.1, following the uh, Lucene versioning, and uh, uh, Ten years later, Solar again separated from 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 Lucene, still still carrying the, the same version version numbers 8.81, which was released in February of of 2021. It became separate Apache project, uh, independently managed. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about the Apache Solar data model and uh, a little bit beyond it. Um, this here represents the architecture of Apache Solar. So there are basically four layers that, that are used to represent this architecture. That's storage, container, solar application, and uh, interaction. These are, of course, logical layers. Um, the storage layer is responsible for management of indexes and configuration and metadata. Uh, above it is J, J2E container uh, on which instance will run and Solar Engine is the application package actually that runs on top of that container. And uh, um, finally, the interaction happens uh, through in the, the in, in through client APIs, some other interfaces like JavaScript, Python, Ruby, and and Solar J client. When it comes to the solar application, um, we have several distinct, uh, let's say, containers uh, that are performing different uh, um, operations. We will talk about them in, in, in detail in, uh, in next slides. Um, one that is kind of interesting is, uh, and it's not independently covered in the next slides, is index replicator. Index Applicator is responsible for uh, distributing indexes uh, across multiple slaves. Now, that was in the slaves is, is a term from the old um, Apache Solar architecture, where the distribu distribution was achieved through so-called master-slave mode. Uh, today, uh, Apache Solar runs something that is called uh, uh, Solar Cloud. Uh, Solar Cloud is uh, a distributed clustering uh, model that divides, uh, it has logical and physical uh, concepts. Um, the cluster itself is, is uh, uh, divided into nodes and nodes can uh, uh, have uh, multiple shards, which are logical partitions. And uh, um, also, they can host multiple collections, which is the term for 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 group of, of documents or group of data 
that uh, 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 Solar manages as a, as a single index. Um, so when it comes to, to storage, which is uh, the, the, the first layer that we talked about, um, it is important uh, uh, to mention that storage layer, layer uh, is, is responsible for, for uh, management of indexes and, and, and the configuration of metadata, as, as, as previously mentioned. Uh, the storage of Apache Solar is mainly used uh, for storing metadata and actual index information. Um, it is typically file store. Uh, it can be either local file system or, or, or it can use HDFS. Um, there are uh, uh, external storage devices as well, as I mentioned. One of them can be a big data storage system like HDFS or, or uh, uh, um, it can be relational database and similar. Um, three components, um, document, uh, uh, field and term. So document is a is collection of, of fields. Uh, field is named sequence of terms and term is, is, is a string. The same string in two different fields is considered different term. So the index stores statistics about terms um, in order to make term-based search more, more uh, uh, efficient. So uh, 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 as we will see in the, in the, in the next slide, um, it comes from the Lucent library and Lucent library uses inverted index to, 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 uh, as a type of index that, 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 that uses. Um, can I, so, I have a question if, if yeah. you don't mind? Uh, oh, <laughs> okay, I see. Yeah. Actually, uh, that, that's that's that we, we we mentioned this inverted index when we when you're yes. when you were telling us about uh, MapReduce. So, yeah, yeah. you don't mind, I used your your slide. Oh, no problem, of as, course, no, as an example. So, yeah, just, just I, have, I have a question before yes. you, uh, yeah. So, can you go back to the storage slide? Uh, yeah. Uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, solar is built on top of uh, Lucene. Yes. Um, and uh, I know that Lucene handles the uh, the index of of the collection that we want to search. Yes. What my question is: What solar is doing above that, uh, or other than that? Uh, does it uh, do any any other uh, um, uh, kind of storing other data than the indexes that Lucene already controls? Well, as you can see here, I, I think it's it's interesting to look at, at architecture. So you will see that Apache Lucene is or, uh, um, uh, handling, it has these four parts, which is query, parser, index searcher, index writer, index reader. However, a chain of text analysis is not is, is actually solar thing. So tokenization and, and, and uh, tokenizer and analyzers are part of, 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 of solar. Um, and uh, up the solar provides other things like um, uh, uh, it has these velocity templates for far searches. Um, it it, it uh, has facets, which which I'll, I'll be talking about in detail later on. It's, it's I was just asking of, about storage. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, yeah. I was just asking about storage in particular. So uh, storage, it's, 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 it has an index storage and it stores schema and, and, and metadata configuration along with, with dictionaries. Okay, so, so that means that Solar has some things to store other than what Lucene is already storing. Yes, definitely, 100%. Index storage is just one part of the, 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 the storage that, 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 that Solar provides. Okay, thank you. So uh, we came to inverted index. Uh, just re as, 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 as a reminder, what we learned already from Dr. Tanner, that inverted index is, uh, is index data structure for storing mapping from data to actual words and numbers to its location on the, on the, on the storage disk. So um, here, as you mentioned, Lucene is, is actually central to, 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 to uh, to this uh, uh, index creation and, 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 and the index format. Uh, and uh, um, 
as, as we can see, it, 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 uh, it lists uh, for one term, it lists the documents that are contained, that that, that term is contained in. Um, it has specific format that is designed uh, uh, for, for actually to maximize the performance for queries. And uh, um, uh, all of the, the uh, jobs related to the, to the indexing and, and handling the index are from within the, 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 the OSIN, OSIN uh, library. Um, so to talk about a little bit about this uh, LUSIN library, uh, we need to talk about four distinct part that um, core Lucene core get, comes with. Um, so core functionality of Solar comes from from Apache Lucene, and uh, it does indexing, query processing, searching data, ranking matched uh, results, and of course returning returning back uh, the results. Um, Apache Lucene comes with a variety of, of query implementations. Uh, I just mentioned some of them here, uh, as you can see them up the, uh, under the query parser. Um, I didn't want to go into details. There is very, very good documentation about it that you can read if you're interested in, in, in details of each uh, 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 query implementation. So as you can see, those are term query, Boolean query, praise query, prefix query, range query, multi-term query, filtered query, and span, span query. So there are some others, of course, but these are kind of the, 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 the most common ones. Um, when it comes to other components, which is like, uh, in the next, next one is index searcher. Um, this is the class that is responsible for returning ordered match results of searched keyword. Uh, and rank rank it as per the, the, the computed score. Um, the index reader provides access to indexes stored on the in the file system, and index writer, similarly to, to index searcher, uh, provides capability to, for creation maintenance of indexes in Apache Lucene. It's kind of interface to, to, to manage to manage manage index, indexes. Um, next, uh, um, uh, next components of Apache Solar application layer that we will talk about uh, is or are analyzer and, 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 and tokenizer. So analyzer can be summarized in, in, uh, in this piece of code that, that, that you can see on your screens. Um, basically, it's a class analyzer class is specified to uh, instruct the solar what type of uh, 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 what type of analyzer to use so the analyzer uh, is specified as, as a child of this field, field type and uh, what does it do is basically um, uh, is responsible for analyzing the content uh, in the text and uh, uh, emitting the, the corresponding tokens. So in this case, we, we used some, something called the white space analyzer, uh, which uh, basically uh, uh, looked at the, the white space between the words, and basically tokens are uh, terms that are divided by, by, by uh, white space. Um, so, um, there is a, when it comes to tokenizers, there is really, really, really large number of, 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 of tokenizers that comes with the solar. There are some, some uh, uh, tokenizers, what they do, they basically, they, they, they break fields of data into lexical units or what we call tokens. Um, so I mentioned most popular tokenizers that you can find uh, be in detail described in, in the, the documentation uh, of the of the solar, um, and I, I will just briefly mention some of them. Um, so, for for example, first one standard tokenizer is uh, a, a tokenizer that uh, uh, is 
treating the white space and, and, and punctuation as delimiters. Um, so basically, uh, it, will, it, will, it will split the words uh, uh, if, if there is a white space or, 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 or uh, um, there is the, the, some, some delimiter, uh, punctuation delimiter between it. Um, interestingly, for standard tokenizer is that a sign at is also uh, part of the, those uh, uh, punctuation delimit delimiters. So uh, email addresses are, are not preserved. They are broken um, when, 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 uh, when, are, when they are going through standard tokenizer. Uh, each tokenizer uh, has uh, uh, its own uh, uh, set of arguments. Um, and uh, uh, they can uh, 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 all the details again. They are in the in the documentation of it. Um, another another uh, uh, to tokenizer that is very interesting is, is letter tokenizer. So this tokenizer creates tokens from strings of contiguous letters. Um, so they discard all non-letter non-letter characters, and. Uh, uh, um, uh, Basically, the the the, uh, the 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 result of this of this tokenization are are uh, words that, that that are letters that are that, that without any non non letter characters. So next is uh, um, I, I apologize, my son just ran into the room. So if you if you hear some noise um, no problem. um can i just just one one suggestion just to save time yes. a couple of questions a couple of uh, of examples are enough for tokenizers you can, you can yeah of course i i was moving forward for for for, for solar application layer um so uh in in, in solar application layer as i mentioned uh, when, when presenting the architecture um they are velocity templates uh, there is a large number of, of, of templates for 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 for, uh, uh, for searches. Um, they they gen they 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 are used to, to quickly generate HTML based front end, customizable and 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 can be used immediately for product for, for production in many cases. Uh, next component of the Solar Apache Apache layer is a, a, a request handler. So. Um, Actually, maybe it would be easier just to, 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 to explain the, the whole process. Uh, um, so initially, we, we upload the data in, in Apache Solar through various means. So there are handlers to handle the data uh, within, the, the, within some specific uh, categories, whether it's, I mean, when I say categories, I mean formats, whether it's CSV or, or JSON or XML, PDF, database. So once the data is uploaded, uh, it goes through a stage of uh, um, of cleaning, and uh, uh, um, so in this in this in this chain, uh, initially uh, uh, we have uh, the 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 situation of of um, uh, the duplication. So after the the, the, the duplication happens. Um, uh, each handler uh, will have its own update processor change chain, and uh, uh, um, um, it's it's going to uh, uh, redirect indexing to different server or create multiple documents from from single one. So uh, request handlers, uh, when user fires the search query on Solar, uh, actually gets passed on to a to, to, to this to this component request handler, so by default Apache Solar provides uh, 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 something called this max request handler, and based on the request, this request handler calls the query parser, which is the the part of of, of Lucene Apache Lucene library. Uh, response writer is responsible for responding back to the client, and uh, uh, um, also in this uh, Solar application layer, uh, faceting is the argument. Uh, faceting is, uh, facets are part of this. So faceting is basically return of the searches based on 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 uh, on categories, 
it uh, 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 it, pre it can present uh, uh, numerical counts of how many matching documents are found for for each category, and it it also has something called breadcrumbs, which uh, shows the, the 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 searcher what what, what are uh, uh, terms used to create this uh, this uh, search for 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 each category. Faceting is something that everybody is talking about when they are talking about Apache Solar. Uh, it's it's very important for for narrowing the uh, narrowing the searches. So um, I'll just uh, 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 mention these six uh, components that are uh, enabling uh, faceting inside Apache Solar. So there are some general facet par parameters like facet and facet query. Obviously, the simplest one, facet, is set to true or false to enable and, and disable. And facet query is used to overwrite the default query that, that, that is being passed to Solar. Uh, field value faceting parameters are used to trigger faceting based on the index terms in, in, in a field. Um, uh, sorry, and, Kanan. Yeah. Um, I have a quick question. What is faceting? Can you define what is faceting? So faceting is basically uh, uh, returning the 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 the, the uh, results of the search based on the on the category with uh, a numerical value of the uh, uh, how many of or, or or how close your 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 search comes uh, to. I mean, how how close is this? Category to uh, a search that that, that, that searcher made. Um, facets use something as I mentioned uh, called par, uh, breadcrumbs, and these breadcrumbs are are kind of parameters that limit the the, the category which kind of results to return. Sorry, okay. Uh, limit, okay. uh, limit the search search engine what kind of uh, results to, to return within the category. Can can you give an example? Um, so, for just example, to make it more clear. Um, if you are if you are searching for 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 let's say cars, um, and uh, you want uh, 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 something uh, specific, uh, 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 um, so you want certain model, uh, uh, you want certain uh, I mean model year, you want certain colors. So all of these are 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 are, are breadcrumbs, and category can be for example. Um, uh, type of the, the, the or manufacturer of, 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 of the car. So uh, for, for each category, you would get a, a result based on the breadcrumbs that, that you have put as the parameters with the, the numerical value of how many of, of, of those searches actually hit the, 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 the data the, inside the data set that you were searching. Okay, thank you. All right. So, uh, yeah, again, there, there is something called uh, range, range faceting. So uh, this range faceting is, is uh, um, doing faceting on, on uh, any date field or any numeric field that supports range queries. Um, it's useful when you are when, when, when stitching together a series of range queries. Um, so if uh, as mentioned, the dates are, are obvious obvious use case for this. Uh, we have pivot faceting. Pivot, uh, pivoting is when we is actually summarizing uh, of of uh, 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 sort count total or average data stored in the table. Um, then we have interval faceting, uh, so we can set the variable intervals. And count the number of documents that have values within those intervals in the specific, specified field. And uh, uh, finally, we have something called local parameters uh, for faceting. These are uh, parameters that are passed. It's a syntax that allows to overwrite global settings uh, uh, that, that, that are passed in something called general parameters. We mentioned only two of those parameters, facet and facet query. So now we come to the third grouping of, 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 of functions in, in Apache Solar Layer. Um, so uh, already mentioned uh, uh, is uh, uh, the duplication as one of the, the processing units. So as the name says, it removes the duplicates in the data to avoid from them appearing in the indexes unnecessary. 
there is something called uh, uh, unstructured information management architecture integration with solar. It's actually Apache Apache project, and uh, it allows for definition of custom pipelines of analysis engines, and uh, 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 those analysis engines are allowing for incremental uh, adding of the metadata to 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 the documents for for annotations. Um, then there is the data input handler. Uh, it provides a mechanism for, for, for integrating different data sources with Apache Solar for, for indexing the data sources could be relational databases or they can be some, some, some other ones like, like web sources, uh, RSS feeds, Atom feeds, emails, and, and similar. Apache Tika is another processor that is a separate uh, Apache project. It's used to recognize different types of the files. So uh, um, Apache Tika is actually the pro processing unit that enables Solar to read so many uh, uh, different file formats. Uh, there is also component uh, for, for lang language uh, detection during indexing. Um, so Solar has capability to identify languages and map text to language uh, specific field during indexing using something called uh, Lang ID update request processor. Um, so in this case, uh, uh, there are three, again, external libraries that are used. One is mentioned Apache Tika has, has built-in feature for, for language detection. Then there is something called Lang Detect, and there is a open natural language processing uh, uh, language detection uh, module that also can be integrated with, with Solar. Finally, uh, index handlers. Um, so index handlers are type of uh, update handler that handle the tasks uh, like adding, updating, and deleting of the documents for indexing. Um, Apache Solar supports uh, updates um, uh, uh, how to say. Uh, so you can use either JSON or you can use XML or, or simple use text format to, 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 to update uh, indexes through index handlers. All right, so we will talk shortly about uh, uh, Apache Solar Client uh, API, so programming interfaces uses. Interesting thing about uh, uh, Apache is uh, that Apache is actually web application. So it's, 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 it's built on, on to, to support most of the open protocols. HTTP is, is fundamental protocol for, 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 for interaction with, with, with Solar. However, there are, there are some other ways to, to, uh, 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 to do this. Um, client API is, is, is uh, uh, in charge of parsing responses and, and sending requests to, to, to Solar from, from, from client applications. Uh, the most significant uh, Solar client uh, API is called uh, SolarJ. Um, it is basically uh, a Java interface for, 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 for Solar. Um, there are some others as well that can be used, and those are uh, um, either Python or Ruby or, or, or other so-called web aware uh, languages. So um, when it comes to the uh, uh, correlation or, 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 or how, how Apache uh, how Apache Solar fits with, 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 with other big data frameworks, so I divided this to three parts, how it integrates, how it collaborates, and, 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 and where it competes. So Solar is not competing with many, obviously, big data frameworks. It's, it's rather uh, there to, to complement them. So we can find Solar integrated with, 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 with the, uh, Hadoop, uh, whether it's, it's Hadoop distribution from Caldera, Hortonworks, MapR, or, or others. Uh, uh, Solar is, is default search engine that comes bundled with them. 
Um, there are also some commercial uh, uh, commercial uh, implementations of, of, of Hadoop that use solar as, as their search engine. Um, for example, Datastax DSC integrates solar as a search engine with, with Apache Cassandra. Um, when it comes to collaboration, obviously the most obvious uh, collaborator is, is Apache Lucene uh, project. Uh, solar uses also capabilities of other big data and machine learning projects like Apache Tika, as already mentioned, and uh, uh, um, uh, solar cloud that is new way how how distributed solar is implemented is using Apache Zookeeper as its uh, cluster management suite. Uh, when it comes to competition, the most uh, uh, obvious competitor is Elasticsearch. Um, and uh, it also competes with some traditional RDBMSs, but I would say that Elasticsearch is, is there as a big data framework that uh, uh, competes with, with solar. Um, this is a little bit of, of comparison between the, the, the solar and, and, and the elastic search. Um, it was done by a colleague of mine and, uh, and I'm using it with her permission. Um, so uh, solar uh, um, started in, in 2008 and elastic search had the first re release candidate in, in uh, 2014, obviously seven years different difference. Um, Solar is built for web search and Elasticsearch is built for scalable search, which means that it, it's not necessarily uh, uh, meant for, 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 for web search exclusively. Um, now solar is catching up and, and it's trying to, to fill in those, those uh, gaps that, that, that Elasticsearch has left with its uh, scalable approach. Um, and uh, 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 Elasticsearch more and more is, is integrated with the, with the products um, that deal with the, with the uh, event-based information. We see, for example, in, in uh, open source, uh, uh, open source uh, cybersecurity operations center uh, suite, which is called Metron, Elasticsearch is, is, is dominant component. Um, when it comes can, to, I, can I, can yes. I have a, have a question uh, about the, um, what do you mean by initial purpose? Doesn't, doesn't that mean this is the actual purpose or this is that no, has changed it, over time? Yeah. The initial purpose means that idea behind starting the project for solar was obviously with CNET was, was a web search or, mm. or, 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 or to, to search web repository hosted in, in, in CNET. Uh, and uh, uh, Elasticsearch was, was built as a search engine that can be scalable across uh, uh, at, at different use cases. So solar had the potential through, through Apache Lucene, especially to, to, to grow into scalable search solution, which with 8.8, .8, definitely they are. And uh, 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 Elasticsearch is focusing on specific use cases. As I mentioned, you know, Cybersecurity Operations Center is very live, high volume event-based information uh, situation and Metron, which is again Apache pro uh, project, is using Elasticsearch for for that situation. Um, when it ha when it comes to client and language support, uh, as we have seen many formats, many clients, many languages, it's really built for 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 openly. Um, Elasticsearch has a client, of course, but it's it's limited to JSON uh, when it comes to the format. Um, when it comes to, to, to configuration, uh, uh, there are two or three configuration files that, that hold schema and, 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 and some other configurations. In Elasticsearch is, is um, a little bit different. There are only two configuration files and everything else is, is done through APIs. Uh, Solar is not dependent on, on APIs as we have seen, as, it, as HTTP is basically primarily a way to communicate with Solar. Uh, but it can be used for, for, for configuration as well. APIs can be used for, for configuration. Um, learning curve is interesting things because uh, um, solar by itself is very simple. As I mean, as you have seen from this presentation, it's not nearly as complicated as, as, as some other frameworks that are presented today, which is understandable. This is search, search uh, framework. It's not meant for, for some complex processing of the data. Um, or streams. 
Uh, however, uh, people found Zookeeper to be confusing, and Zookeeper is, is uh, as mentioned, basic component for, for clustering of the, the, the solar. Um, the, I mean, it's not necessarily complex, it's not confusing, but you know, once when when you understand how distributed computing works, Zookeeper is, 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 is easy. Um, query DSL on, 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 on Elasticsearch uh, is said by users that, that might be confusing. Um, when it comes to, to documentation, this is, this, is, this is really where Solar is killing, honestly, you know, every other framework that, that, that I came across, everything is, is documented. Basically, there is no new book on solar since 2017, just because of completeness of, of and documentation and quality of documentation that you can find uh, on, on their website. And basically, all of this presentation was built using only that, 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 that documentation. There was no need to, to look anywhere else. Um, Elasticsearch for ages was suffering from, from, from poor documentation. Now they are catching up, but still nowhere even near. To the, to the solar. And as I said, there is only one reference that you need for solar, and that's their uh, uh, reference guide that you can find on, 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 their, on their website. Nothing, I mean, there, there, is, uh, there is no book, there is no other additional resource that, 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 that is needed or, 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 or can help except uh, the, the, the solar reference guide. And that would be it if you have any questions. Thanks, Kanan. Um, I have um, a quick question. Um, do you have any notes on uh, on the scalability of solar? I mean, I, I, I maybe so I missed basically, it, but, but you didn't talk about the this issue. In, in I, the I mentioned that it's it's now in the new setup. I mean, it used to be master slave, which was which was kind of difficult uh, situation for distributed computing. Uh, now with the with the solar cloud, the, the the distribution is there. However, distribution is not built into solar. Yeah, solar cloud is built on top of the Zookeeper, and uh, uh, even though they they introduce the new categories uh, uh, for partitioning and 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 uh, 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 how collections are 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 stored on the nodes and 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 how logical partitions they they map to these nodes. I mean, still, this is all zookeeper concepts. So everything that is done on the scalability of solar is achieved through through zookeeper. Uh, so solar uh, by design is uh, a single machine uh, system. Uh, solar by, is that by true? no, it's not. I mean, solar design always supported multiple pro processors, or, or 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 multiple machines. And even when you when you deploy the the, the solar for the for the First, first time you, you, you can deploy it in, in uh, to, to, to uh, act as a two virtual nodes. However, uh, uh, in, in real production distributed environment, all of this is achieved through, through, through Zookeeper. I mean, the, the, the core of the, the, the clustering in, in, in Solar is Zookeeper. Okay. Thank you. And it requires Lucene, of course, right? Everything is on Lucene. Basically, they yeah. separated it as, as two separate projects, but core of the, 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 the solar uh, uh, is, is Lucene. And I think that maybe my presentation would look much different and much more similar to other presentations of my colleagues if the presentation was on Lucene. That is actually brains of the, the solar, but it was on solar, so. Yeah, okay. Any questions to Kanan? No questions. Okay, thanks. I have. Uh, yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot, Kanan. I have now uh, a point to discuss with you. Uh, we have two options. Uh, the first is to continue with Aman's uh, presentation, and the second is to move Aman's presentation to the beginning of next week. I mean, the lecture next week. Especially that uh, Aman is supposed to talk about Giraffe, which is a, a graph analytics engine. And uh, the entire lecture, inshallah, uh, next week will be about big graphs uh, or big graph analytics uh, engines. Um, so 
Uh, Aman, do you mind if you if we move your talk to begin next week, inshallah? No, that's completely fine with me. Okay, anyone minds that? Any any problem with any one of you? No. No. Because we have the quizzes next week. The quizzes will be next week. If we move it, then of course it will not be part of the quiz. Oh, okay. I see. Any any objection? It's okay. Okay. So no objections. Then inshallah, will uh, next week we will start with a man's uh, talk. Then we will have the uh, the two quizzes, then the uh, the the lecture by the guest speaker inshallah that that we have, and then that will be the end of the lectures for this uh, for this class. Inshallah. Any uh, inshallah, any uh, questions or comment? Okay, thank you all very much for the very informative presentations. And inshallah, we'll have one more next week, and then the uh, the uh, the guest presentation inshallah about big uh, big graph analytics inshallah. Inshallah, Doctor, can the the slides will be shared right for all these presentations? Which, which slides? Because uh, oh, these the these presentations. Oh yes, 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 of course, yes, yes. I will share the slides, and I also will share. Uh, uh, hopefully, as soon as I can, uh, upload them to uh, to YouTube, inshallah. The, inshallah. the videos, inshallah. Okay, thank you, doctor. Thank you. I think this is easier okay. and for us uh, just to split it to the next time, inshallah, so that we can uh, we can leave a bit early. Inshallah. Although it's it's not it's not earlier than than usual. Okay, yes, Talk to you on next week. So next next Salam. week is is five o'clock, not four thirty, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, good question. Next week will be Ramadan, right? Ramadan, yes. I have no idea when is the official time. Uh, Isn't for it sure at it will, seven? For sure, it will not be five. <laughs> for sure, the 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 lecture will not be five, uh, because oh, yeah. if is at six, I think, right? Yes. So um, not sure what time will be in Ramadan. Anybody I think, remembers? I think it's eight. I think eight. Yes, doctor. Okay. Yeah, probably probably eight because the iftar is at six, so I, it cannot be seven for sure. Mm. And uh, I think nine is is late. Anyway, so let's assume that it is eight. Uh, of course, the, the the university will announce the time. Yes. Um, and um, of course, it will not be at the, the regular time five. So inshallah, I think we'll start at eight, please. Unless I, I I inform you otherwise, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. I'll see you inshallah next week inshallah. and and khair and happy Ramadan and inshallah will. Uh, thank you, uh, we'll, we'll enjoy it this this year, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome.